So today I thought I would replace my existing MPPT charge controller with my new EP Ever charge controller. It should fit in place because I'm going to lose these meters as well because all of this information, the voltage and the current that's coming in via the solar panels and the current and voltage that's going in and out of the battery is all shown on the screen of this charge controller. So I don't need these anymore. And of course these do have their own current draw. They do uh, put their own burden on the batteries. So I think using just one item should be far more efficient than a charge controller and three meters. So let's crack on and get it sorted. So I'm going to isolate my three solar panels. They're all in parallel, but they have their own individual switches here in the shed. And I'll turn off the main power to everything else as well. So everything else has gone off now. Um, just the timer clock still running because that's got its own internal battery. Um, now one thing I need to be conscious of is the fact that um, this charge controller is a little bit different to the new one. This one has common negative on the solar to battery but it has common positive from the load to the battery and the new controller is common positive throughout. So first things first I'll disconnect the load terminals and the solar terminals and finally the battery terminals. So I've disconnected these meters at the back and they're just stuck on with a bit of tape so hopefully they'll come off. Well that's a fair bit tidier, now all I need to do is probably drill some holes a bit lower down because the uh, uh, this one probably, yeah it's not going to fit so if I drill some holes level with here I can bring in the solar, the battery and the load terminals. Okay there we go, three new holes drilled, well two new holes drilled actually there was already one there. Um, and hopefully enough space to mount the charge controller, so I'll get that up now. So there we have it mounted, and nearly all solar charge controller manuals tell you to connect the battery first, then the solar, and then the load. So that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Okay, so it's all wired up with the solar panels, the battery, and the load. Um, as I mentioned in the instructions, it says to do the battery first, so that's what I'm going to do now and switch that on. Battery's at 13, point, 13 volts there um, and the screen's come on. That's a little bit difficult to see because unfortunately this screen hasn't got a backlight like the old solar charge controller has. Um, but that's not really a problem for me. I can see it quite well here in the shed. It's just not coming up on the video. And we'll add on some solar panels. 50, 100, 150 watts of solar going in there. The indicator's showing that yes, solar power is coming in. And if we have a look, we're going round to load. PV voltage is about 18 volts. Well, that should be right for my maximum power. And we're getting 3.3 amps coming in from 150 watts of solar panels, uh, which are all in parallel. The sun is coming out a little bit, the battery voltage is getting quite high, we'll be doing that absorb equalisation charge to start with uh, and that shouldn't last for more than 30 minutes which is what I've set up. Um, and the last thing I can do is plug in my battery temperature sensor into the bottom. <laughs> 
and that's fed into in between my two batteries is the actual probe end so that can sit in there in fact I could probably hide that behind couldn't I and put it through that hole so it's out of the way so that seems a fairly successful installation the sun's gone behind the cloud the amps have dropped off massively um, but it's all working so this install didn't take very long, did it? If you're new to solar, then perhaps this has been of use to you. Remember, battery first, solar panel second, load third. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you can and comment down below. Thanks for watching.